All right, I need to get these bolts out. Spoiler alert, it's not going to work. They're just going to break off. But I just wanted to demonstrate a tool that I'm, that I'm using that can work, but these are just too far gone. There's just no way. Nothing's going to be able to get that out. Even if you welded something to it, it's just going to break again. Possibly heating it up could get them out, but I don't even think that that would work. And also, I don't have anything to heat it with. The other option is whenever they're almost flush, is to drill them out and use a bolts extractor that goes in there. The only one I have is too big, so complete fail today. So let me go ahead and show you how these things work. You can buy this at, uh, it's either Lowe's or Home Depot, or, or maybe both of them. That's how they look. They got different sizes. They just have a little swirl thing in there that bites in it whenever you turn it left, uh, like left or whatever. Remember, I always wear a safe, uh, face shield when hitting anything. Safety first. Put it on there. Give it a few taps. See, the, the extractor is doing its job. It's biting hard enough. It's biting hard enough to break it off. What more could you ask of this? You know what I mean? It's actually doing its job. To get it out, I just put in a vise, and they usually come out pretty, pretty easy. You just turn right. You know, it bites when you go left. You'll come off going, turning it right. So what these are more useful for is if something's not that crazy stuck, and you have like a rounded off end, pretty much rounded off, right? But even on that, it can still bite hard enough to break it off, break the stud. Oh, there you go. Breaks the stud off again. Now we have a real problem. Like I said, that was, that was a complete fail. I kind of knew I was going to do that. But I just wanted to show that, you know, these it can be very useful as long as the things are not rusted, stuck for... This is off an 82. That's like 40 years old. That's like 40... And you get a few sizes for pretty big. Too. This one is, is good for a 3.8 stud. It even says it. So at this point, what can be done? Really, you should just go buy some new ones. I mean, you, you could spend all day long we're over a, a $50, $60 set of manifolds, but, I mean, if you can't find the exact one you need, I should have never even took them off. That's better advice. Whenever you have them on the truck, you got to pull the motor. Just try to leave them on there if you can. I don't even know if you can. The starter will probably catch. I kind of want to show people this kind of stuff, too, because... Uh, there, there's videos out there showing, oh, bolts extractions, and they, and they have something broke off, and, and it comes right out. If you were to screw this in there clean and break it off, you could probably almost twist it out with your hand. So it's not, it's not a good example. It would give people false, false hope on removing something like this. This is, this is almost impossible. I mean, the only thing you could do is heat it. And, and to be honest, even if you were to put a, have the correct extractor, like the ones that go inside, like you drill out the center, and I would say that if you put the biggest hole possible in it, that it kind of might, might loosen it up. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it seems like it, and it'd be more likely to get that out. The only problem is that a lot of bolts are hardened, and you can't really drill it. Well, these are cheap exhaust bolts. They're probably not hardened that much. I'll show what it looks like when you try to drill holes in this with a cheap drill bit. You could say you already failed. What's the point of continuing the video? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is try to drill it and, and use a, the right kind of, use the other kind of extractor. But if you want to try to drill this, your best bet, you have to center punch it. So... I might not get this perfect, but here we go. Center punch. See, that's <laughs> that's not centered at all. Center punch. Center punch. Center punch. You see, I did kind of move it over a little bit. 
and I'm just gonna have to run with that. That's the size drill bit I'm using. I think it's like a quarter inch. Gotta get some oil on there. And let's see what it will do. Surprisingly, this drills kind of easy, and now you can see how far off I am. Not horribly bad, but yeah, that's not exactly good. Looks like I'm going in pretty straight. So I'm going to try to go all the way through it. Wow, that pretty much went right through there pretty easy. Oh, that would have been a miracle if I could have got it out like that. I just wish I had one a little bit smaller than that. Okay, since I don't have an extractor, and I do have a hole all the way through it that's probably not touching the threads, I'm probably good on that, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go dig around and see if I could find something that might bite into it I probably won't be able to but um, well at least we did prove one thing you absolutely can drill that these were some really cheap drill bits I bought a long time ago like a 64 pack for like 10 bucks and like usually like they kind of suck but they're sharp but they they do not last very long but this one's actually probably still good that surprised me uh, maybe these are not that hard but at least you know you could actually drill that if you had to. So we're learning here. See, the video won't be a complete waste. But let me go try to find something to get that out. All right, after a few attempts, I mean, I got an okay bite on it with the Allen screw or Allen key. But this one right here, this drill bit I'm, that I was using, is like 730 seconds, which 830 seconds would be a quarter. Okay, we're gonna go the quarter inch. All right, that's not gonna open it up very much. All right, there's what the hole looks like right now. I went ahead and upped it to a 1764th drill bit. And watch me destroy this. Manifold. Okay, so the recommended drill bit size for a 3 8 16 pitch thread, which is this, is a 5 16 out of my expensive DeWalt box. A 5 sixteenths. So if I put a hole in there that big, I should be able to thread it. The only problem is, I might take off some of the threads that are in there. So, this is not the way to do it. I'm going to mess it up right now. But, I don't know. I'm just going to do it and see how it looks. Honestly, I don't think any kind of 
bolt extractor would work for that. I actually could get this one in, kind of, but it's, since it's tapered, it could go. It, it just kept breaking the top of it off. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this for educational purposes only. Don't try this at home. Don't do it like this. I'm about to ruin this this manifold. It's ruined. Here goes the threader. Oh my god, I got nervous. Remember kids, don't try this at home. Those do self-center to a to a extent, but it is possible to put them in crooked, like I'm doing right now. There's some kind of turbulence down in there. It absolutely wants me to break it. That's why a safety feature is to use a little wrench. That way you're almost not strong enough to actually break it with a little wrench. Unless you really, really tried. Which I'm trying. To not break it. So, what I'm doing is I'm just wiggling it back and forth, taking it out, cleaning, the, cleaning it out. And I'm going to continue to do this for a while. At this point, it's best to be patient. Because I might be a few minutes away from... Uh, Fixing it or just or breaking that off in there, then I'm really screwed. If you break this off in there at this point, that's like one of the worst things you could ever do because this definitely is too hard to drill. Same thing if you break an extractor off in it too. All right, after going back and forth a bunch of times, I finally got the threader. I finally got the tap to go in easy. See, it's easy all the way through. Do not do it like this. Get the piece out first. I was running a really big risk of messing up the hole by just by doing it like that. If you look, if you look really close at it, and check check this out. Check out how how. Check out how perfect I actually got that hole in it. Look, you screw this in there. And like, you can tell that, you can tell that I pretty much got that hole in there almost exactly perfect. I'm going to say it again, to do it right, you have to get that piece out. I, I mean, I just figured that that if I messed it up, I'm just going to put a helicoil in it anyway. I had a backup plan. And I also kind of figured that once this started going in there, it was going to take the path of least resistance. In other words, because look at the way it's shaped. It kind of like gradually pulls itself in. I kind of fig I looked at it, I'm like, you know what? That's going to that's gonna find its way back into the original threads. 
But I didn't know that my hole was so perfect. I barely destroyed like maybe one thread on the top. That's nothing. And it's almost it's almost perfect actually. So yeah, I would consider that a less than, than good repair. I even went through it and I scraped at it to try to see that, that maybe I didn't, you know, maybe the, the threads would flake out or something. Everything seems good. So the ultimate test is let's see how let's see how much torque it can take. I'm not gonna break it, but I'm just gonna see that as long as it tightens up. I'll go ahead and go with it. So I'm going to put my torque wrench on. I'm going to put it on only 20. Because how tight do you really tighten your exhaust? Think about it. Put that on 20. The lowest setting. 20. Maybe I shouldn't do this, but hey. If it's, if it's going to fail, it's going to fail. I might as well do it right here than put a helicoil in it. There you go, 20 pounds. It's good, man. It, it's good. Ring up and all the threads come out? No, I don't think so. But like I said, I got real lucky that that thing actually went back where it did. Damn, I kind of wedged that in there. Everything looks good. Now I got three more to go. Remember, get the piece out. Don't do it like that. That's the wrong way. So this is a fail. That's why this is a fail video. Another way to do stuff like this, it doesn't always work on, on this. You could. What you could also do is like, I don't know the exact sizes, but you could figure out a metric bolt, a metric stud that's just a little bit bigger. Because if you do the next standard size up, then it'll be a lot bigger. But usually there's a metric size. That's just a tiny bit bigger, probably whatever a 15 millimeter head is on. 16 mil. Any, any, anyway, there's probably finds finds. You, you can usually do a metric and just throw it out for the next size bigger, or even do the next standard size bigger, which is too really too big of a jump for this. But I'm pretty sure there's a metric size that's just a little bit bigger. And thread it. See, I didn't even have to use heat. I don't like using heat because I feel like it's going to destroy the material that you're heating up. It might, I might sound dumb, but I, honestly, <coughs> honestly, I've never used heat on anything in my life. And yes, I take apart a lot of stuff, um, but no, I don't ever use heat. I just use muscle and brains and luck, I guess. And plus, we live down here. They don't salt the roads here, so stuff doesn't get as crazy as I know that people that live where it snows a lot or whatever, that where they salt the roads, that they have problems, you might have to use heat. I'm just not a big fan of it. One more thing. Anytime you do a thread repair, like I even do this to helicoils. Even if they go in nicely, you don't have to, but I usually like to put studs wherever there's a helicoil or any kind of threads that I, that I consider less than less than good like this like kind of questionable it's probably fine but I don't think it'd be a good idea to tighten something a hundred times on some threads that are already kind of they actually look good really there's just a little shallow on this side and a little chip on the a little a little cuts on like two or three of them it's not really that it's really not that bad at all but obviously this gets a stud anyway this stud won't screw in because I was hitting on it with a hammer. Anyway, I'm going to mess the threads up again. <laughs> See, that side goes in. Kind of too tight. Anyway, oh no. Anyway, if you found this video helpful or entertaining, please like and subscribe the end.